Hello y'all and welcome back. In the previous video I presented a very simple version of the cosmological argument for God's existence consists as I presented it of three premises and the logical conclusions uh, drawn from those premises. Some people like this premise conclusion presentation of an argument. They find it clean, simple, easy to follow and others don't. Uh, so for those that don't uh, we're going to in this video and in subsequent videos take a different approach to answering this question. And I say question because it's a very big deal in philosophy to isolate the question that you're trying to answer. In fact, I place this as of paramount importance. So uh, those of you that are my students, uh, you're writing your final paper uh, pretty soon. And you'll note that I require you to have as the, the uh, title for your paper a question that you're addressing. So not a topic, not a subject, nothing catchy, just the question because it's a very big deal to isolate the question that we're trying to answer. So here, the question that we're trying to answer is, where did the universe come from? That's the question. And what I'd like to do, the method that I employ whenever I can, philosophically, is to take the question and list as many possible answers as, as we can think of to this question, uh, examine them all, strengths and weaknesses, eliminate some of the, the less obviously strong candidates first until we have just the heavy hitters, a few big ones that are left standing and examine those until we have what is by the lights of our explanation the best or by uh, lights of our investigation rather the best explanation so that's what I like to try here we've already uh, kind of thrown out or, or suggested put on the table I should say uh, one answer to the question where the universe come from which is of course that God made it so we'll just kind of list that first this answer, of course, is completely and emphatically neutral vis-a-vis -vis the nature of this God. Is this God masculine, feminine, gender neutral, singular, plural, all that stuff, completely, we're just un leaving it untouched. Uh, God, for the purposes of this explanation, just means the being who created the universe. So that's our, the first one we'll list. Now, what are some other possible answers to the question, where did the universe come from? Here, at exactly this point in this argument, is where I find pop culture, or kind of what people generally think about philosophy, is most commonly wrong. So here's what I mean by that. Where pop culture intersects philosophy, uh, sometimes pop culture, what people, what most people think, will be correct. So for instance, I see in pop culture, when people talk about Socrates, they say, well, he said, I know that I know nothing. Well, Socrates does, in fact, say this uh, quite a bit. In fact, it's it's uh, possibly the center of his entire ethical theory is knowledge that he's wisest because he knows nothing. So here pop culture gets it right. But when we talk about possible explanations for the universe's existence other than God, pop culture gets it very wrong because the answer that people give right away will be the Big Bang. And that is, of course, a mistaken understanding of what the Big Bang is. So a brief historical excursus here. In 1915, Albert Einstein uh, releases his theory of general relativity, a series of equations, or a set of equations, uh, basically. And the theory of general relativity, while it holds many things, holds that the universe is expanding as uh, time goes forward. So it's expanding such that everything is moving relative to everything else. Uh, by, so here's an illustration that I've heard. Supposing I took a balloon and I glued uh, buttons to the outside of the balloon. I glued a bunch of buttons to this balloon. And then I... <laughs> I blow it up. Now the buttons are going to move away from each other. Not in an absolute way. I'm not touching the buttons, ungluing them, and moving them to a further part of the exterior of this balloon, but in a relative way because the space that they inhabit is itself expanding. So everything is moving relative to everything else on Einstein's equations in just that way, not in an absolute way, but in a relative way. Now these were just equations, but uh, Friedman, a Russian mathematician, then later Lemaitre, uh, develop in about 1922 a cosmological model consistent with Einstein's equations on which as you go forward in time space itself expands. You may have seen uh, visual images of this model. It looks like an inverted cone, roughly like an inverted cone. Now there wasn't any empirical confirmation for this particular model until 1929, about seven years later, when the American astronomer Edwin Hubble observed in the night sky a phenomenon which he called the red shift meaning that the light wavelengths being emitted from certain heavenly bodies that he was observing were redder, that's to say less intense, more stretched out than his equations would have predicted. So it would have predicted a wider or more intense light wavelength. And he realized that the explanation for this was that the heavenly bodies were ever so slightly moving away from him, the observer at the fixed point, thus confirming Einstein's equations in the Friedman-Lemaitre model of the universe. 
Now this is a fairly big deal because up to this point the default atheistic or naturalistic explanation for the universe was that the universe had no beginning at all, that it extended forever into the past. And this view had some, you know, no uh, insignificant philosophical pedigree because, of course, Aristotle holds this. Aristotle believes in God, but he believes that God is co-eternal forever into the past with the universe. But, of course, if this model uh, was now, in fact, correct, all of that was false. The universe did, in fact, begin at a certain moment in time, known in this context as the singularity. This view, uh, as it sort of took the world by storm, was not received uh, warmly by all atheists because it was inimical to the view that they had held up to this point of the eternal universe. Uh, and it was, in fact, um, not received well by the Cambridge astronomer uh, Fred Hoyle, who gave it this sort of derisive, cartoonish nickname. He said, okay, this is the Big Bang Theory, huh? Now, the Big Bang Theory is itself just a cosmological model, a space-time model, on which the universe began. It is itself strictly neutral with respect to the existence or non-existence of God. If anything, I'm inclined to think it's a little friendlier to belief in God than to disbelief in God because it confirms what theists have historically held, namely that the universe did begin when God said it was going to begin. Uh, nevertheless, strictly speaking, it is neutral vis-a-vis -vis God's existence. So, it's not really an explanation for the universe's existence that's an alternate to God. What would be an alternate to God is an atheistic model of the Big Bang Theory, or an atheistic version, I should say, of the Big Bang model, uh, on which the universe pops into being with no explanation or cause at all. And this is, in fact, what the atheists who embrace the Big Bang, or embrace Big Bang cosmology that I speak with, do in fact hold. The universe begins at a certain moment in time, but there is no meaningful explanation to this. It just occurs. It just happens. So all that is to say we can take this as maybe our second option. So the first uh, option on the table we might hold as a theistic Big Bang theory, namely God began the universe, he just you know, spoke, I suppose, or whatever, and it, it began. The second would be an atheistic Big Bang model uh, on which the universe pops into being with no explanation out of nothing uh, at some moment in time at the singularity. But the Big Bang theory just as such is not an alternate explanation to God creating the universe. So we have two. A third uh, answer that you could give is, of course, the one that we mentioned just a moment ago. The universe extends forever into the past. Uh, I suppose it would be, just be yeah, forever off into the past. Uh, an Aristotelian model, and there are different models or versions of this that don't involve God, I suppose. So that would be a third answer. You could also hold that something else, not God, made it. There are quite a few different versions of this answer, but something else made the universe that would, in whatever way, not qualify as God. Okay, so that would be a fourth answer. You could hold that the universe doesn't exist. I alluded to this briefly in the previous video. You could say it doesn't, doesn't exist at all. Uh, you could hold, I suppose, that it exists necessarily. Uh, in the way that for a theist, at least uh, on the version of the ontological argument we looked at in the previous module, God exists necessarily. You could claim that same necessary existence for the universe. Uh, you could also hold that it caused itself. It pulled itself up by its own bootstrap, somehow caused itself. Um, and you could, as an eighth possibility, and this is one that's become much more popular in like the last 15 years, you could say that it's a simulation. We're living in a simulation. And this seems to rise and fall in popularity as an explanation. Uh, seems to be a little bit more popular right now, but it is an option. All right, we've listed the options. I'm way over time. Uh, in the next video and videos, we're going to examine them one by one. I'll see you there.